Greetings, welcome back Nerdy List aficionados, and it's time to talk about Shazam! The movie name you have to yell because there's an exclamation mark in it. So we're going to be taking a look at some easter eggs that you may have missed or at this point may not even have seen. We got advanced tickets so we're going to give you some spoilers, so be prepared, there's going to be spoilers here. If you don't want to know anything, get out now. I'm Sasha and let's talk about these easter eggs. Number 10, a bit of a casting easter egg. John Glover is in this film playing Dr. Savannah's father. You may be wondering, so what? Well, John Glover lent his voice to the Riddler in the Batman animated series that aired during the 90s, and is still considered by many to be the quintessential Batman series. He also played Lionel Luther, Lex Luthor's father, in the mid-2000s TV hit Smallville. So a bit of a fun nod to earlier DC works. Number 9. Marvel Family Costumes, or well, Shazam Family. So this film decides right off the bat to go full Super Family, and the modern expanded iteration of it too. So for those not in the know, they may have missed the small visual clues, that each of the children destined for the power of Shazam was wearing something colored the same hue as their eventual costume. There you go, some clothing foreshadowing. Number 8. While Shazam embraces its comic book roots, it does tweak things here and there, and not all of Billy Batson's fantastical cast of characters have appeared. Yet. However, there was a nod to one, featured on Billy Batson's backpack. On the back of his knapsack is a tiger. This could be a reference to Mr. Talkie Tawny, an anthropomorphic tiger and a friend of the Marvel family. He is a tiger who traveled from India to the US with hopes of integrating in society. However, people are afraid of him, cause well, he's a tiger. In fact, people think he's attacking. That's how he meets Captain Marvel, who, well, quickly sees what a nice tiger he is and the two become friends. Captain Marvel even gets him a job. That's his first origin before DC bought Captain Marvel's comic publisher, we'll get back to Captain Marvel's name in a minute. Shazam was Captain Marvel. Like most things pre-DC, this was a lot more whimsical, though later on he was a toy come to life, and there is a tiger toy in this movie. Hmm. Anyways, however he shows up, I'd love to see Tawny. Number 7. Okay, I'm pretty sure you all saw this or will see this. It's Black Adam. He appears as a figure in the wizard's magical diorama which he shows Billy, about the last great champion who abused his power. We of course know that this was Black Adam, who has spent millennia holding on to his powered form. So a brief moment, but encouragement that that Black Adam movie is still happening. Thank goodness, I mean The Rock's been waiting for years. We've all been waiting. It's time. Number 6. Fawcett High So Billy Batson had been stationed out of Fawcett since the comic company was taken over by DC. Initially the hero operated out of New York, but nowadays he operates out of Philadelphia. The name Fawcett City was chosen as it was the name of the company that initially created and published Captain Marvel, Fawcett Publications, later renamed Fawcett Comics. It was initially founded by Wilford Fawcett in 1919. So it may seem like a given that the kids go to Fawcett High, but it has long been a nod to their original publisher. And their first city. Second city. Comics are complicated. Captain Marvel has had a rough time legally. Number 5. So you all saw or will notice Mr. Mind, the evil caterpillar lurking in his terrarium, who is either a super smart alien or an evil telekinetic menace. Maybe both, depending on which canon we go with. However, that's not the easter egg, as he is front and center and he recruits Savannah in the film's mid credit sequence. However, it's what Mr. Mind symbolizes that matters more. Mr. Mind is the founder of the Monster Society of Evil, who are actually one of the first recurring supervillain teams in comics. So that means that if we go far back, we could see villains like Dummy, a living ventriloquist dummy, or Mr. Who, a shapeshifter. I just want them to keep the name, Monster Society of Evil. It's so on the nose, it's great. Number 4. Superman Okay. So near the end of the film, spoilers, there is a brief from the chest down Superman cameo, which of course if you go you will see. Who could miss the Man of Steel? However, seeing these two on screen together is pretty iconic. It's happened in animated form of course, but these two have had a history of lawsuits behind the scenes. DC Comics, at the time National Comics, sued Fawcett for copyright infringement, claiming that Captain Marvel was essentially Superman, even copying some of the Superman comic strips. However, it turned out that DC hadn't copyrighted those strips, so Fawcett won. However, ultimately this lawsuit, which had been brought forth in 1941, gone to trial in 
1948 and settled kind of in 1951 led to the company's bankruptcy, as DC was determined to continue to fight. A decline in the superhero genre led to Fawcett deciding to let go, and they sold their assets. So as one can imagine, there's been a rivalry between these two characters for a while, and there are a lot of nods to this in the film's animated credit sequence. It's nice to see though that things are finally settling. Number 3. Shazam! We're edging closer to the names. Now, while Shazam has been known as Captain Marvel for decades, there was a period in time when people actually thought the character's name was Shazam. We're coming back full circle. He was renamed Shazam in the comics in 2012. This, of course, is because of some legal issues. Initially in 1972, when DC put a big push towards revamping his character, the comic series that happened in was titled Shazam, in such bold print that many assumed that that was the character's name, not Captain Marvel. However, subsequent publications would feature the Captain Marvel far more prominently on their letterheads, was cleared up the confusion. Confusion. And now people are confused once more. Only some people though. People like me. He's Captain Marvel forever. Number 2. The Subway In the film, Billy finds himself running from some bullies onto a subway that ultimately takes him to the Rock of Eternity to meet the wizard and becomes Shazam. This is a nod to Billy Batson's first origin. Because at this point, of course, the character has had several. When he first ever appeared, Billy, a 12 year old homeless newsboy who usually slept in the subway station, one night saw a mysterious man, and being a curious sort, he investigated. He followed him onto a magic subway, adorned with magical symbols, which takes him to his destination. So, as one can see, the film does a decent job updating this, but keeping the most salient points. Number one. Captain Thunder. Oh, Captain Marvel, aka Shazam. So, Billy Batson has had naming issues since the get go, starting with Fawcett Comics having no idea what to call him. The running name for a time was Captain Thunder, and this is one of the many names Freddy gives him in the film, along with Power Boy, Captain Sparkle Fingers, and Sir Zapsalot. However, Captain Thunder was the name that he almost got, until last minute the company thought about going with Captain Marvelous, which proved too large for the word balloon, and was hence shortened to Captain Marvel. Also, in some alternate universe, for stories, he is called Captain Thunder. And now he's Shazam. Again. So his superhero name is literally his transformation word. You would think that that would be more of a problem than it is. It would be like if Superman's superhero name was Kryptonite. Little bonus one for you, because it might be very reachy. But the words Kingsbury Publishing appear in some subway ads in the film, and Vanessa Kingsbury is, is the name of the villain, Shrike. She's never been a Captain Marvel or Shazam villain per se, but you never know. Okay, so this movie was fun, a lot of fun. Although, again, as I said, in my heart, Shazam will forever be Captain Marvel. I'm too old to change at this point. So yes, here were some Easter eggs. When you get back from the film, let me know what you noticed down below. I'm Sasha, thanks so much for watching Top 10 Nerd. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, check out one of our many playlists, and just keep on watching all of our nerdy lists. And we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.